Welcome back, everyone, to when our schedules work out daily. And um... <laughs> look, we're rocking a solid one day this week. I don't see what the problem is. <laughs> so uh, before uh, before I get any emails about the RSS feed being broken, no, it's not actually broken. We've just done nothing because we were in New York Monday and we didn't have time to do it. Then Tuesday, I'm, I'm sitting there publishing videos, and Paul says, "I'm out." <laughs> and he just... Yeah, I um. <laughs> I, I pulled out, you know, I was walking around the pavilion thing, whatever they call mm -hmm. that. And uh, I should, I'm like, I should really, you know, you do the backwards math and when you have yeah. to leave and it's different for planes and, you know, distance to the airport, if that's what you're doing. In my case, I was doing a comp, it was literally like cars, buses and mm -hmm. ferries. So I had to figure out how long it was going to take to get a cab to the ferry thing. I've only been to once in my life to take the ferry to get on the bus. I've never done before in my life. And, um, it's on a piece of paper. That's how high tech this is. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, I gotta go. <laughs> and I actually I saw Mary Jo and I said, Hey, I have to get to the, whatever it was called by, mm -hmm. and she goes, Oh, you gotta go now. And I'm like, yeah, that's what, I, that's what I just thought. So I actually had plenty of time, but I, I looked around. I didn't, I couldn't find you. I was busy. So I, no, I saw you outside. So I, <laughs> I said to Mary Jo, when you see Brad, please tell him I had to bolt out of here. I just, and then I ran into you on the way out. Yep. Yep. And then uh, Paul messaged me yesterday and said, hey, when are we doing the podcast? And I said, uh, I'm on a tarmac about to take off uh, sure. from LaGuardia, which went perfectly well, actually. I went there, yeah. showed up, got on the plane, got off, no two hour and 53 minute delay and uh, landed. I had lunch with my wife yesterday because it was our wedding anniversary. I got home about 1.15. Paul does Windows Weekly and he's like, eh, that's not happening. And then Paul yes. finds out he's going to Paris um, early. <laughs> So As I, I don't remember exactly what you said, but it was something along the lines of, I hope one day to wake up and have this problem where I have to go to Paris tomorrow. Um, yeah, we booked mm -hmm. this thing months ago, I think in the, in the height of all the work around getting the home swap ready and, uh, it was a points thing. So it was a suit. Actually, this is ongoing, by the way, there are super low prices to Europe and to uh, Paris in particular. I think the tickets were like 250 bucks if we paid for them with money. Um, but we've been doing that points thing this year. So like we paid for the flights and actually two hotel rooms because we're going to have my daughters coming, um, like all in points, you know, and, um, hmm. it was just such a good deal. And, um, I, like I just said to you, I, I've talked to my wife over the past day or two, dozen times or more about little things about the trip. And then last night she was out when she got back, she said something and I, I didn't have the, the hotel in my calendar for some reason. And I, something she said, and I said, you mean Friday, right? <laughs> Not Thursday. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, we're going tonight. So that was a little bit of a surprise. I had some uh, work related plans around reviews and stuff I was going to publish. And, um, the iPhone's going to Paris, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yes. I was going to send it back. Um, but, uh, now I have to wait. Yeah. So, which probably means there's no podcast tomorrow and then you get back Tuesday, right? Yeah. Now, if you want to, by the way, um, we can do a quickie thing on the street, um, well, I'm away on Monday and Tuesday, if you're interested. I mean, I don't mind doing that. Um, 11 o'clock is what? Is it five hour? I think time change is four o'clock in the afternoon. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm open to that. I'm not trying to abscond Oops. on work completely. I, I um, the camera was on you <laughs> while I was <laughs> looking to see um, who was calling me. Brad's playing a video game while I'm talking. It's fine. It's not unusual. Um, yeah, so I, I can do that. And I'll, I'm sure I'll probably post a couple of small things, you know, mm -hmm. here at uh, cause that's just the way I am. But, well, uh, I will ping you tomorrow and see how you're feeling. It probably won't be a live show because it'd be a lot of work to do a live show for five minutes. I can't. Yeah. Tomorrow's not good. No, tomorrow we actually, we get in, um, very late cause the, the flight actually leaves at actually it might be 1230 in the morning. Mm -hmm. So it technically is Friday. See how that works. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> so we don't actually get in until 1 30 PM Paris time. Oh, actually that's not, sorry, yeah, I was Paul, at once again, we, Paul's learning how time zones work. I've probably flown to Europe two dozen <laughs> times in my life, more. I don't know. I, I Time zones continue to, yeah. You're, you're not alone, developers. You can right? ping me tomorrow. Feel free to ping me tomorrow. Yeah, we'll we'll <laughs> so, see what happens. Yeah. So anyways, um, obviously we were in New York for this thing, which I, I think it looks great. Um, I do too. The, one yep. thing, the one thing I really want, and I suspect this is coming with the next major update, is if that bezel was like 75% smaller, mm -hmm. oh, Game changer. Oh, I, well, so, I don't know about game changer, but I think that would be that would be well, awesome. No, I mean, so I, I was talking to Mary Jo about this, and between us, mm -hmm. we both and we've heard, look, 
people have seen versions of these products with USB-C ports, right? Yes. Now, these didn't uh, come that way. It, it's really clear that what happened was they're looking at the roadmap. Um, Surface isn't really on a one-year schedule. It, it's almost on a 15 to 18-month schedule, yep. right? So if you think about that kind of time frame, um, when the next versions of these products ship, and, I, and actually, based on the schedule, I would say maybe Surface Book will be the first time we see this, mm -hmm. Surface Book 3. I think there is major changes coming, right? Yeah. And uh, those will include form factor changes, what I would call architectural changes. And mm -hmm. I'm guessing here, but I believe that there will be a future, more powerful version of Surface Connect. They don't seem interested in walking away from that technology. Yep. But there's no reason they couldn't improve the performance, enable that thing uh, a few of us want, which is like two 4K displays at 60 mm -hmm. hertz. Um, and then we'll see that happen across the uh, board. So two two of the rumors that came up that I thought were kind of interesting. I, I I have no personal knowledge of whether or not these are true, but I'll just throw these out because they, they kind of because they I invented them and they speak to the point I'm trying to make. No, uh, one is that <laughs> uh, there was a rumor that Surface Pro, the next Surface Pro, would have uh, more curved corners, right? Right. And it would look more like Surface Go. Now that didn't happen. This mm -hmm. is an identical form factor. I bet that is coming. Um, there were also rumors about the USB-C ports, which is obvious, and mm -hmm. there's no doubt that that is coming. In fact, I, I pretty much confirmed that. I talked to two guys from Microsoft. They both said the same thing. Like, look, obviously it's coming. Um, I think they're waiting for the for the Big Bang release. And so I joked yeah. about this on Twitter, but it's true. I, I think this stuff is what we would call an S year mm -hmm. over at Apple. Um, it's the same form factors, right, when you go from a, a numbered iPhone to an S, um, and updated internals. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, and it's in a new color, you know, which looks wonderful. And I think this is fine. You know, I, th there's the tech enthusiast part of me that has a real problem with them not going with next gen technology like USB-C or Thunderbolt 3. Yeah. Absolutely. And I, and there are people who completely agree with that, but there are also people who, and I think this is their customer who just, you know, the majority of the customer base that says, I, I just want the thing that works. Like I don't, and and he went on, he blah, blah, blah. And, and he, when he, the time when he took my laptop was kind of that moment where mm -hmm. he was like, you get immersed in it and it's about getting out of the way. And how do you sell a product whose job it is to get out of the way? Because, you know, you're supposed to be all about the software. Okay. It, some of that's marketing nonsense. But I think there's something to that. And you and I have talked about this a lot. Uh, there's something about these Surface PCs. There's yeah. a, it, it's something that's hard to explain. There's just something right. Yeah. Um, I mean, we well, I took the Surface Book Two up there, and I, that there was no hesitation. Although I still kind of, I love this 15 inch. I still kind of want the 13 inch. Just it it travels better than yeah. yep. than the 15 inch. Uh, don't get me wrong; I was able to smash out two videos and throw them up online. Um, yeah. Poorly recorded audio. Well, uh, <laughs> I would be open to swapping <laughs> machines for a while if you want to give it a shot. I don't um, know if I want it that bad. <laughs> well, no, I mean because when I need something to yeah. travel light with, I'll bring a Surface laptop. And, sure. Um, I think the Surface Book uh, 2, the 13-inch the version, is kind of right-sized, you know? Yeah. It's got the perfect size screen. You know, the keyboard and uh, trackpad are identical to what you have. Yep. And it's it's still, you know, it's not a it's not an ultralight, obviously, but it it, is, it certainly weighs less in the back. Yeah. And so the other kind of, well, obviously, they came out with, I don't know if anybody leaked this at all, but a black one and a black laptop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it's anyway, so they came out with the black laptop too. But Paul, if you noticed, there was no S snake in the room. I did notice, and Nothing. you know something? Hmm. It's not even offered. You wow. can't buy these computers in S mode. It is not an option. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh boy. Not even knowing that fact, I had. I think I just tweeted this, but I, mm -hmm. I, I sort of said something like. The absolute absence of any mention of S mode is everything you need to know about this failure. But you mm -hmm. know what? I'm going to tie three things together here. I did this on Windows Weekly. I'll just I'll kind of summarize sure. it here. I think now that Terry is gone, the direction is shifting. And there's a real hard line stance that I always complained about around such things as the UWP app platform, mm -hmm. uh, Google's inability to get Chrome into the store mm -hmm. because Microsoft won't allow certain things in store apps uh, like your own rendering engine. Mm-hmm. Um, the uh, Windows 10s and S mode, and then um, this thing that has kind of taken over the store a little bit, 
which is the desktop apps in the store. Mm -hmm. And we see with Office, this actually this is like 10 things that I'm tying together, but uh, we saw this past week with Office that Office Mobile and Windows 10 is no longer being actively maintained. Yep. The solution is the desktop version, the more powerful version. Now, they're going to make it look simpler, right, with mm -hmm. the simplified ribbon, which is wonderful. They let you go back and forth, which, by the way, something the old Sanofsky regime back with when the ribbon debuted in 2007 or whatever that was, mm -hmm. did not allow, right? You're seeing a new kind of a, a more customer-centric thing happening here than happened under Terry Myerson, frankly, who was yeah. pushing forward an agenda with no regard whatsoever, I think, for partners or customers. And this is kind of a net positive. You know, Windows 10 S, S mode, is a complete non-starter. There, there is no, and I, I know I say these things in absolutes and people get all freaked out. Mm -hmm. I, I, can I just, can we disagree? I'm right on this one because it happened. There, there are no customers using this. And by customers, I mean meaningful customers like businesses or schools or whatever. They, volume, this got yep. traction yeah, with nobody. And, and there's this kind of, I, I don't mean to insult people, but there's this kind of weird mentality in the enthusiast community where, you know, where we see on the Microsoft side where it's like, well, Microsoft did it, so it must be right. So I'm going to try this. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to not get everything I should have because I want to do it the, the Microsoft way. And it's mm -hmm. like, guys, this stuff is arbitrary. You, you need to do the best thing for you. And um, I, S mode is a complete failure. Uh, this, it's, this is over. It's the stupidest thing. I, I understand. I've always said this. Uh, S mode is a destination. Mm -hmm. it, it's it, you see it out there in the future. We want. We're trying to get there. We are not there today. We weren't there a year ago. So uh, yeah, not available. They're not even going to make it. You couldn't choose it if you wanted it. Yep. Good. <laughs> yeah. Good. No, I was thinking about there's some stuff in the book about how Terry Myerson um, forced them to launch the laptop with the S because that was the only way he was going to prove it. And um, yeah. basically at that point, the laptop was a tool of Windows, right? They were yeah. they went to them and said, hey, if you're going to launch this thing, it has to use this specific thing. Now it's reversed that Surface is a tool for Microsoft instead right. of the other way around. It's just interesting how those things flip. Also, uh, this, the whole laptop thing is very interesting. I mean, a lot of people point to this uh, and accurately will say there's mm -hmm. nothing special about this device. Um, you know, uh, to two decades after we ha got our first laptop, Microsoft has reinvented the laptop. And look, it's a laptop, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, one of the supposed points of Surface is that it's new form factors and, mm -hmm. you know, they make new markets and all that kind of stuff. Um, the Alcantara thing, I think, was a little bit of a a bone to throw in there like, Hey, look, see, here's this unique thing. And I, I like it. It's fine. I actually sure. wish each color was available without it. I think yep. it should be an option. People can get it if they want it. I think a lot of people would choose not to get it, but it's an attractive machine. I love it. Uh, but then I like the MacBook air. Why wouldn't I love it? It's mm -hmm. kind of a carbon copy, isn't it? Um, the funny thing about laptop is, is what you just said is one thing. And, uh, part of that deal was they wanted to prove that S mode would make sense on premium devices. And uh, Terry Morrison, when I talked to him uh, months before they announced S mode, when it was still called Windows 10 Cloud, was telling me that, uh, you know, there, this is not for low end devices only. There will be premium devices. You know, obviously he knew this was coming. But tied to this, you know, he went to Surface and said, we need a device. What do you got? And they were like, we don't have anything in the pipeline. And they said, well, you must have, you know, th this design is years old. It's one of yeah. the very first Surface devices that that team came up with. Julie Larson Green was still involved with this stuff back in that day. And uh, the team internally rejected it because it was a Me Too product. It wasn't mm -hmm. a new kind of a thing. And so when Terry Myerson came down looking for something to run ESMO that was kind of nice, they were like, well, we got this thing we never used, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, so this whole thing, it's like, uh, it's just, it's goofy to me. I, 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 the thing I keep coming back to are enthusiasts and how they'll, they'll like, it's like they'll punch themselves in the face to do the Microsoft thing. And it's yep. like, guys, you're just hurting yourself. Why do you do that? Um, so anyway, don't, don't run S mode guys. Come on. Crow. And then the other, there were two other real announcements. I mean, the Sur service studio two, they're a little bit brighter screen, better contrast, USB type C, but no Thunderbolt. Um, still not an easy way yeah. to get another display. And then, uh, yeah. the big, the bigger one, but where I guess it's technically smaller, the headphones, which are super interesting, but they're also really annoying. I wish they would work with the Xbox. That's crazy by the way. Um, it really and, is, you know, maybe, uh, next year they'll come out with a mm -hmm. version of the Xbox and they'll come in white and green or something. I, there should be a black version, right? Yeah. Um, but the justification for this product 
is vague to me. Um, it kind of reminds me of when Apple introduced the iPad. They were like, you know, one wonders if there could be a third device. Like, who, who wondered? Like, nobody yeah. wondered this. You know, but like, what, what was the point of this, right? We already have all kinds of great um, noise canceling headphones of various kinds, uh, types, you know, like the in ears and, you know, over the ear and then mm -hmm. just on top of the ear, like these kind of things are kind of on top of the ear. Uh, it, they're not noise canceling, but, you know, different types of headphones. Um, I mean, is this. This isn't. There's nothing particularly unique about them, right? I mean, yeah. it's sort of like Surface Laptop. It's like, okay, it, you know, it's it's that thing with your logo on it in your mm -hmm. color. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I mean I don't, the, it's got the Cortana integration, which will work on iOS and Android. Very okay. easily adjustable levels of noise cancellation, but none of it's that. Like that. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying these are bad features, but there's nothing overly yeah. unique that where you look at it and be like. Yeah, they just they changed well, headphones forever. This is the wrong way of thinking, right? Because obviously it's different people, different teams, whatever. But mm -hmm. I, I, it's hard for me not to go down this path. Like, we have been waiting for you to upgrade these products for all these years, and you came up with headphones. <laughs> it's like, guys, wh wh like, what are you doing? What are you working on here? You know, mm -hmm. I, I, it just seems. Listen, they're beautiful. Uh, yeah, they're expensive. And they sound great. They sound awesome, and that the way you can dial on one—I think it's volume on one side and noise canceling mm -hmm. on the other—is um, not necessarily intuitive, but it's very easy to use. It's very once you understand, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, I get yeah. It. you know, it's nice. Yeah, they are really nice. The one thing I wish they would have come out with, and this is again personal, whatever. I wish mm -hmm. they would have came out with an AirPod competitor instead of like a Bose Quiet Comfort competitor. <sighs> yeah, just yeah. because the AirPods are good, and I really like mine, but. I, I, what I want are AirPod like things that have a rubber sure. seal that aren't just that hard plastic. So you can use them on mm -hmm. anything in a room that has more than, you know, a, a child talking without hearing them. <laughs> Knowing Microsoft, you'd probably like charge it with one of those Surface Connect things. It'd be like the little fin would have to go into the headphone. So then it could be wired while you, <laughs> while you were charging. Um, the other, I mean, this, again, this is the wrong way of thinking, but I completely understand where it comes from. Uh, I heard this complaint multiple times on Twitter, which was, let me get this straight. You just killed your music service and now you're coming out with <laughs> headphones? Like, and yeah, uh, yeah fair enough. That's... It, it, it's, it's like they canceled Xbox and then they released a PlayStation 4 controller. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, eh, okay, <laughs> yep. you know, all right. I don't know. Yep. They're really nice. And I don't know where I heard this, but somebody said, hey, so when's Panos making a webcam? And, uh, and it's kind of like, well, yeah, that's going to be the next thing. Because remember, Microsoft used to make their life cams right. for a oh, long time. I, I should tell you my theory about that. When we looked at Surface Hub 2, um, there's a, there's a, it, what it looks like, do you remember what they're called? they were called? The, Apple used to have those old, it was like a barrel looking, um, I think it was just called an eyesight camera. You, you kind of clipped yeah, it on the top Yeah, that's what Microsoft the Life Cam, I think is what it's yeah. actually called. Looks like a tube or whatever. Yep. Um, the, the camera on the Surface Hub looked like that. And mm -hmm. as they were kind of rotating it around, I was thinking to myself, you know, you, you kind of would might want the camera to be in different places based on the orientation. I wonder how that thing connects to it. It connects via USB. Mm -hmm. That makes me wonder if that isn't the camera. Right. Very well. That could might be. be Microsoft's camera. We might have already seen it. Yeah. It, it would not. I mean, yeah, if that's all that it is, it just plugs yeah. in that you're right. That's my guess. The only, the ne only, I never asked when we saw it. I, yeah. But the it only thing that makes me PC. hesitate about that just slightly, but the, the body might be the same as that camera doesn't support hello, which I would think that if Microsoft's going to ship a webcam, they would want it to support Windows hello. Well, um, yeah, there's no reason there couldn't be one that does. Correct. That yep. would sell yep. that one for PCs, you know. Yep. I just, I'm just throwing it out there. I, 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 I will say, at the very least, I would be surprised if their internals were not very similar. Yeah. Oh, I, it, yeah. I agree. And it very much could have been that it is the same camera and they just turn it off. It's just software. Yeah. Yep. It yeah, because you can't log in that way with the with the screen. Yep. And then the rest of the event was a little odd. Yusuf Mahedi was there talking yep. about some random things they showed off app mirroring on the desktop which is neat but um, we, we got another curiously private home video yeah. from panos panay that's always slightly on the creepy side yep i yep. believe his daughter was playing the song i think it's called despaccio or something like that it's a uh, we're old it's a puerto rican uh pop song fairly recent Pretty despacito popular. no despacito i think despacito. is the name 
pretty popular too. And uh, other things that were announced, which might not be going so well, depending on who you are, is Microsoft said 1809 is now available this week. And depending on how your upgrade process goes, you might actually have a whole bunch of content deleted. So be careful doing that. There's a lot of reports out. Uh, I shouldn't say a lot, but there's an, enough reports out that people are upgrading from 1803 to 1809. And when they do so, they find out basically everything in their My Documents, that section of their hard drive is just gone. And if they go oh, to geez. if they go to windows.old, that folder, it's not there either. And so... Looking just up. Yeah, a lot of people are so make sure your stuff is in OneDrive. it should be fine if it's in there because it's backed up in the cloud but just be aware that there are some known issues and it's more yeah. than just one off uh there were a lot of posts on reddit there were posts on twitter and mm -hmm. so the and paul and you know this as well as i do um this could only be impacting one half of one percent but when you're upgrading 300 million users Mm -hmm. That's a large number of people. Still, so. Yeah, it could be millions. Um, yep. I've heard from three people already with uh, losing content in Edge or Edge not. By content, I mean bookmarks and so forth. And um, Edge not working at all. You know, like it won't load pages. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I guess, you you know, <laughs> a lot of people who read our site probably just upgrade right away. Like, we, you mm -hmm. know, we do. We just kind of knee-jerk do it. Um, and we could probably recover from this kind of thing. Uh, but you know, maybe you, it might not be a horrible thing to export your bookmarks, uh, your favorites, whatever edge calls them now. Um, yeah, which I need to try edge again now that it's the new version. Actually more specifically, I want to see how one password works with it because I've really grown to like this in Chrome. Chrome has it right. implemented perfectly where it just replaces the dropdown. And yeah. I, um, I, <laughs> I always, I, I, I did the same thing. You know, I, I upgraded and I mm -hmm. kind of looked at edge and I was like, oh yeah, it, like right off the bat, you know. You can't uh, you can't take over the new tab page, right? So mm -hmm. I use a plugin called uh, Momentum, which I love. It always does beautiful photography, and I've got my, my most commonly used links right up there in the corner, so I don't need the bookmark bar anymore. It's really nice. And then you run Edge, and it's like this crap from MSN News and sponsored posts, and it's like, ugh, like I just, I don't know. I know you can change it, folks. Don't please don't tell me, but um, you can't change it to what I want to change it to. Is the point. Yeah. So, Paul, um, I've been keeping a secret from you for maybe. <laughs> okay. Maybe. Are you uh, having an operation, Brad? Is this something? No. <laughs> no, no. Oh. So, I ended up buying one. Yay! <laughs> what did, did you get? I got the probably the exact same one you have, the 256 gold. Okay. I actually Thanks. got the 64 because I knew I was oh. going to return it. So. But yeah. But, um, yeah. But I would have gotten the 256, yes. I'm waiting for a case to show up tomorrow. But, I may um, still get the 256. By the way, if I, I I'm thinking about sticking. I actually really I I love this phone. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm still not a big fan of this face thing, and I actually I like to hear what you think about that. But uh, just the rest of it, just the there's a certain finesse to it, and it's um, someone said this to me maybe in comments or on Twitter, but Apple does a really good job of that thing. Microsoft doesn't do a good job at, which is finishing the job. You know, yeah, it's it feels polished. It does. It's um, I do quite like it. The face thing is fine for the most part. It's most annoying in one specific application, which I use a lot, uh, which mm -hmm. is my banking app. And so okay. what you can do is you could do thumb ID or whatever, finger ID, whatever the hell it's called, or face ID, and that logs you in rather than having to type your password every time, which is great. The yeah. problem is, is that when with the old one, you could just tap the app and put your thumb on the reader and it would just work. Now you have to tap the app, wait for it to load, oh, then it does scan a goofy your face. thing from the side, doesn't it? Have you seen those? The, the weird, um, there, I can't, did I take a picture of this? There, there are some weird um, authorizations you can do. So anyone who uses an iPhone knows what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I don't use it enough to even remember. But where you actually have to press the power button while it's on to say okay to something. <laughs> and it used to be one of those things you used to use from the home button. <laughs> you know, I've yet I just, to come across that one. You will. I mean, it's yeah. – uh, I, uh, I don't think I – but I, I will tell you, I, I didn't think the speed would make that much of a difference coming from a seven, but um, yeah. it absolutely does. Like oh, it's, nice. my wife was playing with, she's like, "Whoa, this thing actually really is a lot faster." And if I'd never touched one or played one um, with yours in in the bar in New York City, so this is all yeah. your fault. I wouldn't have probably <laughs> noticed it until okay. I was like, "Oh God, this actually, it actually is kind of nice." Yeah, so, I didn't take a picture of it. Um, so, but what, uh, as far as so. Here's my deal. And I, I, every, every time you complain about something like this, someone mm -hmm. will come up with a scenario where actually the new way is better. And I, I get that. But, um, you know, 
I, I've, after using years of phones with the button on the back, um, mm-hmm. or, and years of using phones like the iPhone seven with the button on the front, I, I, I like the, the tactileness of you reach for your phone, you, you naturally go to wherever yep. that reader is. And by the time you bring it up here, it's, it's logged in, you're ready to roll. Yep. And, and it's, this, it, it, it's, I'm, I'm over explaining something that's very natural to do, but it takes a split second, right? With this one, you have to bring it up. It does the little unlock thing, and then you have to swipe, right? Now, I yep. get why. I, I do get why. Um, it is that explicit moment of, yes, I intend to log in. It's, it's the reason I use a pen mm. on my Surface devices instead of my face. I, don't, I like to explicitly do this, um, but it's just not as – it's an extra step. You know? Yeah. It's an extra – Technically, it's not an extra step, right? <laughs> you're, you're you're doing something and you're bringing the phone up in both mm-hmm. cases. But the thing is, by the time the phone's in front of you with the button, you're ready to roll. Right. You have Th- to that observe. Is the difference. Yep. Because you saw this in the bar. Um, uh, you you knee jerk it so that you think it's re- it must have found me because it works so well because it does mm-hmm. work pretty well. It does work well. I, I'm swiping up and I'm like, why isn't it logging in? And the lock is still locked because it didn't see me properly. And um, I, I just the, it's just too uncertain. I, I, I yeah, still like so I'm still button, toying with it. I turned off, so raised to wake is the mm-hmm. thing that turns the screen off. I currently turned it off. Interesting. Um, so I haven't decided you... if, if I'm going to keep it off yet, but... All right, so if you have want to log into your phone right now, you have to press the power button? No, you can just tap the oh, screen. Oh, okay. Okay. It turns on. And then it unlocks, but then you have to swipe up. Yeah. But basically what you can do is just double tap the bottom of the screen kind of well tap and a swipe and it works i don't know it's not perfect i i do miss that button aspect of it yep. um but what about the notch does the notch uh you no, find it i mean it's it's whatever um i mean going from a seven to that it's so much more screen real estate it's like eh it it, it is annoying in some like really bright white apps but yeah. um yeah. it does i don't know do i lose sleep over it no it, and if the next yeah. one comes out with a smaller notch am i gonna go buy it no but i probably will anyways uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> look it's beautiful I, the phone is beautiful mm-hmm. you know i, I there's just yeah. no way around it and you know people i i complain about the um what i call the uh mold, you know whack-a-mole nature of the stupid ui that mm-hmm. probably is going to change next year by the way but you know what uh, whatever you get used to anything that you use every day you just you, is muscle memory. You probably arrange your apps in a certain way, so you know your finger goes right to whatever the email app is. If that's what you want to do, you don't you not look you know you don't have to look at it and find, figure out where things are. Um, the apps on I well, you, this isn't an issue for you, but for me, going from Android to iOS, the apps are almost universally better looking and have better functionality on iOS. Mm-hmm. They're just again more fine tuned. It's it's something about it. Um, it's it's you know it's hard to complain. I mean the the, the login thing I was talking about and the notch mm-hmm. are complaints, but honestly they're minor complaints and they're not, they're not deal breakers, you know? Yeah. I got to see too. I ordered a, I don't know if you saw the case that I had on my old phone. I don't know why I bring down here. It's just a really thin, hard plastic shell, yeah. but it's very yeah, thin. Yeah. I ordered one in, cause this is the gold phone, same as yours mm-hmm. in like yep. a Navy in a Navy blue, which I think would look pretty good. The Navy blue and gold, yeah. but I'm still tempted to go up and look at the Apple leather one. I would definitely look at it because when I got the iPhone 7 Plus, I got the gold version at the time, mm-hmm. and it looked really nice with that brown, what do you really call it, saddle, whatever the color yeah. is. It just, it go, and of course, the, the gold in this version is even nicer. I, I, it almost has a brass yeah, it's not, kind of brownish color to it. And if you don't see it next to white, the back is kind of like a creamy... Yeah, it's a nice color. That's why I got it. It sucks. It sucks. I can't see it. You know, the problem with this thing is like, there's no right. way I'm not putting this in a case. Like it's right. all glass. It's you know, it's like this beautiful object. You don't want it to scratch. But yep. So we'll. Uh, maybe I'll go do that after lunch, and then I'll yeah. compare the cases and see. But anyways, um, so yeah, I did do it. I did buy the Apple Care, which is expensive at like one ninety nine. Mm-hmm. But yep. but. If I plan to keep this phone for two years, like I did last time, I ended up using it once on the last phone. So which you, I mean, you spent like fifteen hundred bucks. Yeah. Right. I mean, the phone itself must have been what twelve, twelve fifty, two hundred bucks for Apple Care, and then whatever for a case. That's, you know, but yeah, I mean, you got to kind of look at it as at least you use your last phone what three years? Three, two. Three? Well, two years. Two years. And so, 
Yep. Yeah. So spread that out over two years. I mean. Yep. So, Paul, you okay. got anything else before you go visit? Um, um, I'm going to write up something about surface all access before mm-hmm. I go. Um, there are a lot of questions there, by the way. Uh, yeah. There's no actual prices for anything. Uh, yeah, it just says you, 24.99 and up. Right, because I, it's and it's impossible to know what that means exactly. But here's what I believe it means: 24.99 is the base model Surface Go with mm-hmm. Office 365 Personal. Because if you read the site, it's it, you can't go see what things cost. But hmm. you can choose the Surface device, and that means you can probably configure it in mm-hmm. at least a few different ways, if not in every way you can normally. And it also suggests that you can choose the version of Office 365 you want. Because remember, this is for consumers, right? So mm-hmm. at the very least, I believe you're going to get a choice between home and personal. It's conceivable. They might even offer, you know, whatever they call it, you know, business or whatever those entry-level not entry level, but the um, the plans are for business, you know, individuals in the business side of the plan. I mean, I don't know. Mm-hmm. So, and you can actually uh, add peripherals to it too. So you might be, I don't know, because again, it's really vague, but I assume that at least means like a mouse and a pen if your uh, device doesn't come with that and maybe a dock or you, uh, you could kind of stack it up. So even like a, um, like a Surface Go, yeah, you could still probably spend hundreds of dollars a month, you know, if you do out enough stuff. Um, cause remember you get, this is office 365 over two years, right? It's not a one year subscription. It's a two mm-hmm. year subscription. Um, the home subscription, that would be 200 bucks right there. Yeah. You know, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking at it about this, but looking at the site just real quick for surface go, I'm assuming mm-hmm. entry level is 24 or 25 bucks a month. Surface book two bundle is at about 55 bucks a month. Surface pro yeah. bundle starts at 47, yeah. uh, surface laptop. It starts at 46 and a studio is 150. To put these numbers in perspective, um, my iPhone upgrade program cost per month. And I, uh, at the time, the last one I did, I think it was the iPhone 7 Plus, and it was the upgraded version, probably 128 gigs of storage. I, it was basically 40 bucks a month um, just for the phone, you know. Hmm. Now, I, I think the. I think they spread it out over two. I, th- I think that was spread out over two years, but it's only like a thousand. But anyway, it's about forty bucks. But um, I don't know. Like uh, until you get to the Surface Studio, I, these prices make sense to me. Yeah. And then it's like one hundred fifty bucks a month. Man. Yeah. <laughs> it's like that's uh. I mean, it's an expensive computer, but it's interesting. Me personally, just looking at these prices, I don't paying 50 roughly 50 bucks a month for a surface laptop or surface book two, I think makes a lot of sense for a student. Yeah. Yep. So. Especially if that person can make that thing last for the three or four years, you know, mm-hmm. um, you'll have that cost per month for the first two years or maybe your parents will, if you're lucky. Yep. Um, yeah. In the, in the scope of a, I don't know, 30 to $50,000 a year, typical state school education, uh, you know, what's 50 bucks a month between friends. Yep. All right, Paul, you got anything else for today before you, uh, no, just, you know, spaz attacking because I have to, <laughs> I have to leave. Yeah. I'm just happy. Just, I'm not getting on a plane and, uh, yeah, yeah. I could see why you would be. Yep. So, all right, folks. Well, that wraps it up here today. We will try to do maybe something small tomorrow cause Paul will be um, dining with the Parisians potentially. And, uh, we'll be back definitely on Tuesday or something like that. But you know, Whatever day daily you want to call the show. We'll be back next time. Have a good one. Ah.